Hey, what's up guys? It's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today. Today is the 23rd day of May Madness, and today I'm bringing you a Springtail culture video. So before we set up the culture, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about why Springtails are useful in your tank and why everybody should be incorporating them into their setups. At a very basic level, Springtails are detritivores. They'll go around eating mold, detritus, waste, anything that is breaking down, they will happily take into their diet. So that could be anything from leaf litter to waste from your animal to uh, dead bugs, dead feeders, that kind of thing. These are the springtails and the, the crew that will help clean that up. That's why I recommend it for every single tank out there because they do an incredible job. They're easy to culture, easy to keep going, and are definitely a kind of mini science project in their own. So I would strongly recommend starting to breed these guys. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Culturing springtails is a very, very easy thing to do. In front of you, you see three key features. You see a tub, something to house them in, something for them to breed on, and you see food. First we'll start with the tub. The tub is just a standard 16 ounce container with a lid on top. You're going to be using this for their, uh, I guess, like breeding facility. <laughs> their breeding tub where they're going to live. That's going to be that. Keep in mind you don't have to use a 16 ounce container. You can really use anything. My master culture that you guys saw in the opening clip there is a shoe container. So if you're looking to go more large scale and then just have some smaller ones as uh, seating or whatever you want to call it, little tubs, then that's perfect. I'm going to be using this 16 ounce container. Doesn't mean you have to. This is lump charcoal from Rona or Lowe's or whatever you guys want to call it. This stuff is extremely useful and is probably my favorite media to breed the cultures on because it purifies water, it stays fresh, it doesn't get moldy, it is a very good medium, it has very high surface area, especially when you break it up. Now when you get fresh bags of lump charcoal, make sure it's lump, you cannot use the briquettes to do this. When you get fresh bags of it, essentially what you're going to need to do is, I wrap this in a towel and then beat it with a hammer, and then it breaks it into this smaller kind of powdery substance. Now there are still some larger chunks in here, which is perfect for for the culture. You don't need to break it super finely, uh, just medium sized chunks is totally fine. Now there are other alternatives to the charcoal, however I haven't found much success with it. You can use uh, hydro balls, you can use orchid bark, you can use several several other things. You can even just use plantation soil, that stuff works okay. However my favorite, and I've experimented with everything except the hydro balls, in my experience the charcoal that you see in front of you is the best option and uh, I strongly recommend you take that into consideration. Moving away from their habitat, now we can switch to food. Food for them is extremely important to provide a booming culture with enough nutrients to continue to sustain all that new life. So what I use is a combination between Arcadia's custodian fuel and my own personal homemade mix that I'm not going to go into in this video. But if you guys want to see a video on my personal mix, then I can post that up. Uh, in the next coming days, so that is certainly a possibility. But I strongly recommend if you're if you just want something quick and easy, the Custodian Fuel by Arcadia is a phenomenal product, and it'll set you up for success right from the get-go if you use this stuff. Now, of course, those two complicated mix. Maybe you can't find Arcadia. Maybe you don't want to invest as much time as it would take to make your own. Basically what I would recommend is just using brewer's yeast you can use, you can use uncooked rice, you can use various vegetable products, just experiment, Google and find some other alternatives and you will certainly find them. But what I recommend is these two things right here. Alright, enough of my blabbering, you guys get the point. If you really, really want a more in detail version of this video, I can make that after May Madness. But this video is focusing on setting up a culture. It is really, honestly, very easy. Setting up a culture is really the easiest part of this whole thing. Uh, it's not rocket science by any means. What I do is I just take my charcoal, I pour it in there. more. Once you get your charcoal in there, you're going to want to hydrate it with some RO water. So I'm going to get that right now. Pour that in there like so. You just want a, a base of 
the water on the bottom, and you're set. That's all you need to do. Now, the hardest part of this whole thing is actually going to be getting the springtails from your culture over to the new culture. I have something called, I believe they're nematodes in here. They're basically worms, little white worms that uh, accumulate in water droplets and stuff. So what I'm going to do is not a conventional way of moving isopods from one container to another. I'm just gonna tap them into the new container like so. You can see them jumping off. Now this is to avoid the transfer of nematodes from one culture to the other. You don't necessarily have to do this. It's just a precaution that I take. Obviously, if you think you're growing a pretty clean, uh, I guess, culture, then you can just toss this whole charcoal chunk into the culture and you'll seed it pretty well because there's a bunch of springtails on here. And there you have it, folks. You've seeded your new culture. There's other ways to do that as well. What you can actually do is fill the culture with water and then pour that water with the floating springtails into the new culture and you have transferred a ton of springtails to start your new culture. It's a very quick, very easy method of doing so, and I strongly recommend trying it because the springtails are actually hydrophobic, so they float on the water, and they create little bubbles of springtails running around. It's pretty cool. You can see here, though, I have plenty of springtails in here to start a new culture, and in a couple weeks, hopefully, we'll have a bunch of little baby springtails in here. Just to wrap up the video, you can see here the size of my shoebox master culture to my little 16 ounce deli container uh, kind of seeding cultures that I like to start. So that wraps up the how to culture springtails video. If you like the video, drop a like down below. If you want to see more springtail goodness, then leave that in the comment section and let me know that you want to see a more full video on that. While you're down there, let me know if you want to see the springtail homemade food video. I think that one should be a hit, so I might just make it anyways. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, along with all those questions that I just asked, leave them in the comments section. And if you want to see the very end of May Madness, which is going to be the best part of May Madness, stick around, subscribe to my channel, and click the little bell to get notifications. Thanks for watching, guys. Graphic Phoenix, out of here.